Cornucopia Market with Balloon. And today I'm going to show you how to make a fast and easy bow and arrow. This is probably one of my most popular designs. And in fact, it's so popular that I can't believe I haven't already shown it to you. But this is one that I can absolutely guarantee once I make one, everybody's going to ask for it. And also it's one that, believe it or not, is going to get the adults involved. Sorry, as I'm playing with my mic here. Okay, so um, what we need for this is five 260s. And to save time, I've already pre-inflated them. Two of the 260s are fully inflated with a good burp. So that means, you know, once you inflate it, just go let a little bit of air out. And, the, and one 260 is uninflated and will remain so. And then we have two 260s that are inflated, leaving, oh, I guess I'd say probably about, maybe about a four inch, five inch tip or so. Okay, and these are gonna end up being the arrows. All right, so let's start with uh, the first balloon. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make two loops. So just bring it in and you don't want the loops to be too big or too small. I would say about the size of your hand because we're gonna put that other 260 right through it. Okay, so you can see that I'm using the nozzle and I'm twisting it around using the nozzle and then I'm gonna kinda loop it through and lock it. And then I'm going to match that loop with a second one of the same size. Let's see like this and um so so here's what we have it's kind of like an elephant trunk uh, or something like that and then we're going to take the yellow one or your second 260 it really doesn't matter what color it is and we're just going to feed it through just like this okay and now we're going to come to the end we're going to make two little bubbles like so and we're going to make a bubble on the end of our first 260 just like so and now we're going to kind of pull it through now if you just left it just like this you've kind of got that baseball hat design right so you could use this as a baseball hat but we're not going to do that today today we're going to make the bow and arrow all right so then we take our uninflated 260 and you're just going to kind of find the center of your loopy one and you're going to tie your 260 on and for no particular reason, I usually start with the nozzle side. There's absolutely no reason for that. Some people think that you have to squish all the air out. Um, I don't think it matters. I actually think that if there's a little bit of air in it, it's less likely to get stuck inside of the arrow. Um, and then you're just going to bring it down and wrap it around the ends there. Okay, so this is your bow. Ooh, happy birthday. <laughs> this is your bow. And, uh, well, we'll just steal this piece right now to repair it. And as you can see, if something goes wrong, it's not such a big deal to repair. It'll look a little bit funny, but that's okay. Okay. Yes, you see, no matter how long you've been doing balloons, sometimes they pop. Get over it. All right. So we're only going to make one arrow, but I advise you when you make it for the kids that you give them two arrows. Um, the reason being that this is going to keep them occupied longer without coming back to you every second because their arrow popped. Anyways, all right, so we've got our bow, and the arrow is going to kind of go between, like rest on those two bubbles, and that's going to help it fly straight. So now we need to make our arrow. Let's push that down just a little bit. Okay, so the way that we make our arrow, remember we have it uninflated here. Remember, we always start twisting on the side where it's tied. And what we're going to do is we're going to make two pinch twists, or two sets of pinch twists, two double pinch twists. So twist off a little bubble and do it like that. If it's easier, some people find it easier to do the pinch twist by making a tiny little dog leg. You see I'm using my nozzle again, doing that. And then I'm going to put it through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to squish this together and I'm going to twist one this direction and one that direction. So one to the front, one to the back, and that's going to split them into two ear twists or bean twists or pinch twists or whatever you want to call them. Now, this alone would work just fine. However, I've found that if we make a second pair, it works better. So you're just going to do the exact same thing, and that is another two dog legs that are, you know, little, little bubbles that you're just going to twist right on top of that one. You don't have any space between it. And then again, you're just going to come and move one forward and one backward. Happy birthday again. Sometimes with the second set of pinch twists, it's easier to do them individually rather than 
together. So do one pinch twist and then the other pinch twist. And then the way that you want to set it is that you have one set like flat and the other set down. So you, you see they're kind of um, offset so that this is kind of forming those like little lips. And then these two here are like kind of holding it. All right, so now here we go. We got our bow and arrow. And what we're gonna do is you just, you put it like this, you see? So you have the string, you lightly put those bubbles on the string, you rest it onto your guide bubbles, pull it straight back. I'm a terrible shot, but I'm gonna give it a shot.